Uh, so, um, I'm going to talk about heterotic standard models, also known as the high country as opposed to the swampland of the string landscape. Our goal is to study vacua which reproduce the MSSM, or as close as possible, at low energies. The string landscape is huge, of course, but it seems that the high country region is much, much smaller. In fact, I would argue that in some sense, it seems to consist of one item at the moment, although this is clearly a function of time. So um, some of the questions are, how many such vacua? Do they have common properties? So can we make predictions? Uh, what are the constraints coming from the global UV completion? So we're going to emphasize that uh, we are going to insist on global consistency of the string vacuum. We're not looking for gauge theory solutions. We're looking for things that can be embedded in string theory. And as you heard in the morning talk, this is only one corner. This is the E8 cross E8 heterotic string on Minkowski space cross Kalaviyao. Uh, there are various other corners, and we've already heard a beautiful overview of how they all interrelate. Uh, this is the material that I'm going to cover. Um, there's my paper with Vincent Bouchard, where we construct an SU5 heterotic standard model. Uh, there's a follow-up with Miriam Svetic and Bouchard, where we analyze some of the phenomenology of that model. Uh, then there are a couple of other, other papers with Bouchard, where we classify a wide class of Calabria threefolds that are candidates for these compactifications and study bundles on them. Um, the two new results that I hope to get to, one is work with Katrin Wendland on obifolds and free fermionic constructions and their relation to the standard models, the, uh, the heterotic standard models. And the other, based on Anthony Bach's pen thesis, is uh, work with Bouchard and, uh, and, and uh, Gross, Mark Gross, uh, which is in preparation. So, um, for a It is still not working perfectly. Okay, so we will not see the table of contents. But the first chapter is the a review of Suzy hydraulic vacua. Um, we'll take X to be a smooth Calabria threefold with a bundle on it, structure group G, that can be any structure, any subgroup of the eight. Typically, we'll take it to be SU4 or SU5. We have two kinds of uh, conditions on the bundle. First, we want it to be consistent within string theory. So the consistency constraints are that V should be polystable and satisfy anomaly cancellation. Uh, now, polystability is a slightly technical, mathematical notion, but it is needed in order to have a connection, which is a solution of the Hermitian Young Mills equations. Um, according to the theorem of Donaldson, Ullenbeck, and Yao. The second condition with zero on the right side is just the Green-Schwartz anomaly cancellation, and with the five brain on the right side, it allows for heterotic M-theory compactifications, where the, M -brain, where the five brain is wrapped on some holomorphic curve in the Calabria. So in addition to that, we have the phenomenological requirements that make it look like the standard model. So first, we want the comitant H of G to be the gut group. So SU5 or SO10 are the most obvious candidates. Uh, next, we need to break the gut to the standard model group, and that can be done in two ways. It can be done using fluxes or using discrete groups. In the heterotic theory, the fluxes don't work. The fluxes work in F theory, as in Bafa's talk this morning or my papers with Martin Weinholt. Um, in this talk, I'm going to stick to the heterotic models where you need a finite group to break the symmetry. Uh, there are various groups that would work, and I'll, I'll discuss them as, as I go through them. Um, there are various extra phenomenological constraints. You want the first turn class to vanish, simply because the group is, simply, uh, is a simple group. I apologize for all those Bs there. That's something that happened when we copied the file. Um, go figure. The third churn class expresses the number of generations, so you want that to be plus or minus six. But that is only three generations at some sort of a topological level. We want something much finer, which is having exactly the right spectrum 
of the MSSM, which means various precise specifications of what H1 of the bundle, H2 of the bundle, H1 of various associated bundles like the exterior powers should be in order to recap exactly the particle spectrum. And going further, you'd like various conditions on your cover couplings, mu terms, things like that. They all tend to involve triple products of cohomology groups. So to summarize, we are looking for a heterotic vacuum represented by a non-simply connected Calabi-Yau and a polystable bundle on it satisfying a lot of constraints. Um, the, example, the main example that I'll talk about is the one where the fundamental group is just Zemo2, the group is SU5, so we get an SU5 gut which is broken by Z2 to the standard model group. Um, there are various other things that you can do with group SU4 there it turns out that Z mod 2 or even Z mod 4 do not suffice, but groups like Z mod 6 or Z3 squared will, will do it. And that, that will give you an SO10 gut, which can be broken down to the standard model group cross U1, which, ha which is basically U1 B minus L. And then there are various discussions in the literature that I won't get into them, whether it is or is not possible to get rid of that further U1. So I'm going to focus on the first story with the SU5. So again, the outline is not there. Um, to construct such a model, you need to go in two steps. You need to construct a non-simply connected calabi that you think has some chance of working, and then try to find a bundle on it. So for the calabi what we'll do is we'll actually construct a simply connected one together with a finite, free group, fi finite group that acts on it freely, and then we'll let x be the quotient and that will be our smooth Calabi out threefold with non-trivial Wilson lines. So um, in the main example, X tilde, the cover, is going to be a smooth fiber product of two rational elliptic surfaces. Those were studied in the math literature by, uh, by Schoen. I'll describe them in a minute. They, um, they form one of several most promising classes of these Calabi out threefolds. In, a, in one of the papers with Bouchard, we classified all possible finite groups F which act freely on, these, on this type of calabi out. You can also look at non-free actions, and then you are in a different corner of the story. Then you're looking at orbifolds, which is an, another successful direction of investigation. I'll say a few words about that. Um, so the other example that I hope to say at least a few words about is X tilde there is the small resolution of a particular complete intersection of four quadrics in P7. These were investigated by Mark Gross and his collaborators. And they noticed that there's a, f there's a, a free action of the, f of the group Z8 squared on that. So there's 64 Wilson lines on, the, on that manifold. That's the world record for, for a fundamental group of a calabi -Yau. And it seems that we have now succeeded in building a good uh, heterotic compactification based on that. And the exact meaning of good is yet to be clarified. Uh, there are also two non-abelian groups, also of order 64, which also act freely on the same thing, and we're exploring what can be done with those. There are lots of other spaces you could work with, like hypersurfaces, complete intersections, to in, in, hyper, in projective spaces, or toric threefolds, and so on. Um, for some reason that I don't completely understand, these have not yet yielded anything really close to the, to the standard model. So here are a few words about the, um, the, the space that we're constructing. We start with a surface B, which is fibered over P1 with elliptic fibers, or T2 fibers. Uh, there's 12 singularities. You can get this explicitly if you start with the plane and blow up nine points that are the intersection of two cubics. And then you have the pencil of the cubics through the nine points. They become the, the T2s or the elliptic curves in the vibration. So you take two of these, B and B prime, and you take the fiber product. That means uh, pairs of points in B and B prime that map to the same point in P1. In general, this will not have any automorphisms. The idea is to consider special Bs and B primes so that this calabi will admit a free group of automorphisms. I should have mentioned this calabi has Hodge numbers 19, 19. And we'll find various situations where there are auto free automorphism groups on it, and then we'll analyze the quotient. So the automorphisms also factor into 
endotomorphism on B cross endotomorphism on B prime. And the classification basically reduces to study of certain types of automorphism groups of the surfaces. On the surface, the action cannot be free. It must have fixed points, but you want to arrange it so that the fixed points on one side do not match the ones on the other side. So you get a free action on the product. So we did the classification, and the short story is that these are the groups you get. So the biggest ones are Z3 squared, Z6, Z4 cross Z2, Z5, and then, and then some smaller ones. The second step is to study the bundles on these spaces. And we do that by a combination of several techniques. One is the Fourier Mukai transform, um, which allows you to construct, the, to, to convert the construction of vector bundle data on the, collab on the elliptically fibered threefold to spectral data on a dual calabia, which in this case is actually isomorphic to the original. So you need X to be fibered, usually by T2s, although in the, in, in the recent example, it, the fibers are going to be T4s. So we need to develop some new technology for Fourier Mukai on those vibrations. The good news is that it's easy to prove stability from the Fourier Mukai data, as was done by Friedman, Morgan, and Witten. The, what, what makes it a little hard is that you need to, you're producing a bundle upstairs, and you need to show that it is invariant, and that tends to be a tricky issue. The, uh, the other useful construction is due to Sayer. It starts with two given bundles, V1 and V2, and produces an extension. The pros are that if you start with V tilde upstairs, it's easy to show that it descends, that it is invariant. The problem is now to prove stability. So that, that sometimes actually kills the project. So to satisfy the phenomenological constraints, we may and usually do need the combination of both of these methods as well as sometimes other techniques such as monads, Hecke transforms, and so on. So um, the model that we do have is based on this threefold with a very simple <coughs> fundamental group, just Z2. The bundle we build is going to be an SU5 bundle. It's an extension of a rank 2 bundle by a rank 3 bundle. Each of the individual pieces is constructed by a Fourier Mukai transform, and then we find a, the, the right kind of extension, which is invariant and stable, and so on. So, um, more precisely, there are several v small variants of this construction. Uh, in order to cancel the anomaly, you can do it in hydrotic M theory by putting, it, putting some M5 brains in the bulk, or you can move them all to the hidden brain and construct some simple stable bundles on the hidden brain, which work equally well to cancel the anomaly. So you can think of this as either as a perturbative or a non-perturbative model. They, they, they're both there. Uh, in the paper with Bouchard and Svetich, we analyzed the phenomenology of this model. And I have to say that I consider that more of an amusing exercise than a serious physics project, because here we are, we work, we play around with algebraic geometry, we come with a model, why should it have anything to do with the universe? And surely when we came up with that first model, we figured, well, that's the first one, you know, a week later somebody else will come up with one, and a month later it will be a few more, and then hundreds and thousands, and so on. And it's kind of peculiar that it does not happen. So to date, this still is the only one that is reliably known to work. And, you know, it does make you go back and wonder, is there something to it? But I'm, I'm still mostly a skeptic or a joker. Or I, I, I don't think this is really the universe, but I think there's a good chance that similar techniques may yield something useful. Uh, anyway, what we came up with in the phenomenological analysis was that this is an MSSM. The gauge group is exactly right. No extra U1s. The spectrum is exactly right. No exotic particles, except, of course, it depends on some complex moduli. We have certain numbers of complex and Kähler moduli in the story. Uh, the trilinear couplings uh, are semi-realistic at tree level. Roughly, that means we have um, we have masses for the up quarks, not for the down quarks. Roughly, at the classical level, then you need to um, hold your breath and hope that quantum corrections will improve the situation. Um, whether it does or does not, we, we don't have the tools to, to decide that. Uh, we also have our parity, which is conserved at tree level, which means that T 
to the extent we can check it, the proton is stable. There are Higgs mu terms, and with, at least with some interpretation, we get uh, neutrino mass terms or, or right-handed neutrinos. Uh, there's still a lot that you would want to do. You, you would want to investigate SUSY breaking using the hidden sector, modular stabilization, higher order corrections, more phenomenology, and so on. So um, there are lots of other models, and uh, let me just put them all up. Uh, there are the obifold type models, such as the one of Buchmuller, Hamagachi, Lebedev, and Ratz, and many others, and I apologize for not even attempting to give a complete reference here. Uh, most of these are based on Z6 orbifolds, and they do give uh, interesting compactifications, and it would, which are clearly different than the ones we have. Um, well, uh, th there's a lot to, to be analyzed about the relation between orbifold constructions and the, the strict heterotic constructions. There are the examples of Brown, Hay, Overwood, and Pantev, and su subsequent work by Brown, Hay, and and over it, where the, um, the Calabi-Yau is, is one of those that I described. It's a Z3 cross Z3 quotient of, of, the, of, of some other specialized Shen threefolds. Um, the bundle that they put on it, unfortunately, is unstable. They can get a stable bundle on one sector at the expense of making it unstable at, on the other sector. Um, so in that sense, we don't consider that a viable supersymmetric solution. Um, I'll discuss a little more in a minute uh, the, the, so the, the size of the landscapes you get when you try to drop some of those conditions. Uh, there's also a model, the, the Naya model of Faraji, which is based on these free fermionic models, which is roughly a Z2, Z2 to the end, O before. Interpretation. Uh, that doesn't say that there's anything wrong with it, it just says that it, it, it lives in some other universe. Um, Vincent and I have been trying pretty hard, I should say, to construct additional models. Uh, we, we did a very extensive analysis of the Z6 models, and we were just unable to find any bundles that satisfy all the properties. That, that, that's where we started thinking. Maybe there is something to, to that first example. Why is it that only that one works? And the insight seems to be that there's a very strong tension between inequalities coming from anomaly cancellation and stability. They pull exactly in the opposite direction. So if you drop either one, it's very easy to satisfy, but getting both of them to work seems to be very, very delicate. The work in progress has to do with this gross manifold where the fundamental group is Z8 squared. I hope to uh, talk about that a little bit later, towards the end. Um, so if you try to relax the conditions, we do get infinite families of non susy vacua uh, that have otherwise all the right phenomenological aspects. Um, we also get infinite families of models with the, with the six Wilson lines and so on. The ones of Brown et al. are a particular example with fundamental group Z3 squared. And presumably, again, there are many of those, presumably infinitely many, although no one has tried to do that. Uh, so there is this infinite landscape of partial solutions. Now, obviously, you don't want to admit an infinite chunk of the landscape if you believe that the landscape is finite. So such finite families have been considered by Acharya Douglas in landscape study. And the suggestion, the very reasonable suggestion, is that there should be some cutoff on the, sc on the scale of Susie breaking that will cut it down to a finite collection. The question is, given any particular model, is it below or above cutoff? There's no eff effective tool that I know of that will tell you that. Um, okay, so let me say a few words. How much time do I have? Thank you. Great. So uh, let me say a few words about the work with Wendland on orbifolds and free fermionic models. We start with T6, which could be written as a complex manifold, as a product of three elliptic curves. Or it could be written in other ways. For example, there's the SO12 structure, which is not of this form. It's isogenous to it, but not the same as a product of three elliptic curves. And we look at actions on that of finite groups. The, so the group G has a twist part and a shift part. The twist part we will take to be Z2 cross Z2, acting on the three variables by 
an even number of sign changes, and then we combine that with a lattice of shifts. Um, so you do some analysis, some reduction, and you realize that um, you can always, that, that more do some reduction, you can always find an actual subgroup of G which looks like, which goes isomorphically to the twist part. In other words, there's a Z2 cross Z2 subgroup that acts by those sign changes, although it might involve a hidden shift. And it turns out there are actually four inequivalent types of these shifts. So in the paper with Faraji, we analyzed the first one, where there is no shift involved in the basic group, and then we extended that to a full classification in the work with Wendland. Um, so for each of these models, we calculate a bunch of relevant data. We calculate the Hodge numbers via orbifold cohomology. We calculate the fundamental group, which are the, the non-orbifold, the honest Wilson lines. And we, we study some of the, ge of the geometry of these models. And an interesting observation is that discrete torsion has minimal effect. So in principle, you have a lot, a lot more freedom to turn on discrete torsion. But in practice, you don't get any new Hodge numbers. The only effect is that you get mirror symmetry. The, by turning on discrete torsion, you can interchange the role of H11 and H21, but there's nothing else that you can really do. And uh, some similar observations have appeared in a paper on mirage, mirage torsion by uh, Ratz, Hodge, and several others. Um, so they had some partial uh, the ob ob observations along these lines, and we noticed independently that um, this seems to be completely universal. Um, this is a phenomenon that was observed first in the paper of Waffa and Witten, and uh, in, in an example, it's not at all clear why this should be the case in general. So the, the nature of the work is very messy. Uh, we basically list long tables, and I think I will not get into too many details. Let me just flash the first table. So this is the rank zero case. That means that there's no shift. The order of the group is just four, two, two times two. But as you see, there are, f there are four examples, f four separate cases that, um, of, of these groups, of, of, of uh, groups acting. The, the notation here for the sectors sh shows you how the action is. Let me not try to decipher the, the notation. But basically, when you see zeros, that means it's the standard action. And when you see ones, that means it's some sort of a shifted action. Uh, so these are the four types of groups that I mentioned. So all refinements of the first one, so this 51-3 model, that is the waffa witten model. And we analyze its refinements, its quotients in the paper with Faraji, and then the others are in the <coughs> subsequent paper. So here is what you, the beginning of the table when you allow one shift to be added. And then you allow two shifts to be added, and you get longer lists and so on, except in principle, this keeps going up to six shifts because you're in a six-dimensional torus. But the reduction principle seems to eliminate a lot of these in the, in the high range. So there are actually fewer three shifts than two shifts. And for four shifts, you get only one, and it stops there. So um, some of the I particular examples included here are the waffa witten model. Then there are two quotients that have Hodge numbers 27, 3. One of them is simply connected, and one is not. And we show that the one that comes up first is the one that's not simply connected, is not the, related to the name model. It's actually, uh, contrary to some statements in the literature, it's actually the second one the, uh, the, uh, the, that is related to the name model. So the geometric part of the name model can be identified with one of these pre-fermionic objects. And then there's one non-geometric step that you have to add to it. To it. Uh, the second example in, in, in the zeroth table is the 1919 Schoen manifold wi on which many of the successful constructions are based. Uh, another one of those is the Z2 quotient, which is used in the old paper with over at Pantev Waldrum and in the paper from a couple of years ago with Vincent. The, the, the moral of the story is that there's an exciting possibility that we may be able to realize some of these heterotic standard models within the free fermionic world, get honest conformal field theories, it will allow us to do a lot more computation than just the heterotic approach. Um, but uh, this remains to be seen. Uh, other examples here include other portions of the Shen three folds and uh, various Boucher Voisin manifolds and so on. So it, it seems to be a fairly rich class of objects. Thank you. So um, the, 
as I said, the world record for Phenomenon Group is in this manifold of uh, Mark Gross, which can be fibered over P1. The fibers are two complex dimensional, four real dimensional tori. And it turns out that these things have a natural polarization, that the churn class, which has uh, elementary divisors 1, 8, so that it is not isomorphic to its dual. Rather, the dual is a quotient by a group Z8 cross Z8. That quotient is the manifold that, that we're interested in. So we're really interested in constructing vector bundles on the quotient. But the nice thing is that the spectral construction, the fourier mukai transform, converts that to constructing speckled data on the original simply connected manifold. So this whole issue of invariance factors out and becomes very easy. So the advantages are that we have a huge pi word which gives you a great phenomenological flexibility to interpret it at the end, and we don't need to worry about the invariance. The difficulties are that it's very, very hard, excruciatingly difficult to find spiral covers because these are co-dimension two phenomena now, not divisors and um, the spectral construction needs to be combined with this new operation, a Hecke transform, in order to, uh, to check stability. Uh, so, so we need to check stability for that. Uh, so the news is we seem to have one new example that has been checked in some detail, and most likely this will actually give us some range of tens or maybe hundreds of new examples. But as of now, I, I don't, I'm not quite ready to uh, construct it. W one very pretty feature of this is that while everything I'm talking about is an application of algebraic geometry to the physics, this next step actually goes the other way. We, use, we, we need to use a little bit of physics to produce the relevant algebraic geometry. Namely, we don't know how to produce these curves directly, but we have to calculate Gromov Witten invariance. We come up with a non-zero answer that tells you that there will be a curve even though we can't construct it. That curve is the one on, the way, on which we put the speckled data and continue from that. So, um, to summarize, within the E8 cross E8 heteroptic on smooth threefold, our corner of the landscape, the high country region is very small and has, it's a function of time, but right now it seems to consist of a unique model. Uh, others may, cons may exist, but we don't really know. Um, it seems, it has become more likely since I wrote these lines, that, uh, that uh, we, we will find some new examples on the gross threefolds. Uh, on the other hand, if you start weakening the assumptions, if you allow the breaking at the compactification scale, it leads to infinite family of models. And clearly not all of them are phenomenologically viable. And it's not clear uh, how you would establish whether any of them are. Uh, still to come, we'd like to construct more threefolds, more physical bundles. That is absolutely essential if you want to study common properties, common features to all of them. We want to systematize the study of the high country using algebraic geometric methods. Uh, there have been some successful attempts in various corners. There's a paper of Anderson, Hay, and Lucas, and very recently another paper of Hay, Lucas, and I forget the name of the third person. Uh, one classifies monad construction, the other classifies certain types of uh, Fourier Mukai constructions. So they are trying to systematize the construction. Unfortunately, they don't find any standard models, but at least they they make long tables of possibilities. Uh, then you come into harder phenomenological issues. You want to stabilize moduli, find F-theory, dual pictures. Uh, the models that Waffa presents are in F-theory. They do not have heterotic dual, but nevertheless, these heterotic models should have a heterotic F-theory, right? should have a, an F-theory dual involving some kind of discrete torsion, and uh, we're trying to establish that and use that to study them. Um, Suzy breaking uh, can be done by several techniques. Uh, Mike Douglas and collaborators have now developed techniques for studying the Calabiao matrix and the Kähler potential. So all of that needs to be fed into the system. Thank you very much. And, uh, Questions. <laughs>